Got a cool question here. Uh, this one's about uh, pre-workout stimulants, caffeine, stuff like that. This one says, uh, what do you think about the use of stimulants such as caffeine pre-workout uh, or during the day to combat fatigue? You spoke briefly on Facebook a while back and said that you weren't a big fan because they prolong the recovery process. Could you elaborate a bit more on that? I can see how that's true because any caffeine during the afternoon or before an evening workout will hamper sleep quality, which leads to poor recovery and a negative feedback loop of needing more and more caffeine because of said poor sleep quality. The problem is, I just don't have the same intensity of motivation to train if I don't have a little bit of caffeine or stimulants in my system. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, and what do you do with, with your own athletes? Uh, cool question. Um, we don't get questions kind of in this direction very often, so it's kind of fun to talk about. But yeah, you're right. I generally am not a fan of using a lot of pre-workout stimulants and stuff like that on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Part of it is what you're talking about uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the, it affecting your sleep quality. It can do that. It doesn't have to if you time it and if your workouts are at midday and yada yada yada. But it will it will still affect your recovery process because what happens when you load up on a stimulant? It shifts your autonomic nervous system toward the sympathetic dominant side. Heart rate goes up. Heart rate variability goes down. So sympathetic, uh, your sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight nervous system. That's what we want to be engaged during the workout. However, after the workout's over, as quickly as possible, we want to shift into a parasympathetic dominant state, uh, which is your rest and digest system. So after your workout, you don't want to keep walking around fired up the whole time. You want to calm down. You want to get some food. You want to relax because the sooner you do that, the sooner your recovery systems engage. And the sooner they engage, the faster you'll be recovered. Now, if you load up on a whole bunch of caffeine, you might make it through that one workout great, but if the caffeine doesn't get out of your system for four, five, six hours, um, then that's four, five, six hours you know, of less than ideal recovery time. It's not that recovery is zero during those, during those hours, but it's less than ideal. So you have this period of time of less than ideal recovery time. And you might be thinking four, five, six hours, who cares? But when you're training on a high frequency, like most of our programs do, um, your next workout that's going to hit those same muscle groups and maybe even the same movement patterns, probably the same movement patterns to some degree, that's less than, or it's usually right at 24 hours away, 24, 48, 72 tops. But somewhere in that zone. Now, if your next workout is tomorrow, let's say you bench today, we're gonna have you bench again tomorrow. Um, if you take that 24 hour recovery period and then reduce it by six hours, then you just reduced it by a third. I think, math in public, right? <laughs> That's always dangerous. Uh, six divided by 24 is four, not three. So you reduced it by a quarter. See, that's the danger of doing math on the on the fly without having prepped for any of this. Anyway, so you the point is that you're reducing your recovery time um, by a significant chunk of time. So um, anyway, that kind of threw me off a bit. So where was I? Um, so you reduce your recovery time, uh, and it just kind of reduces the quality of recovery during that time. So that impacts the next workout and, and so on. Um, in addition, you have the effects that you mentioned where it can affect sleep. Now, the other edge to that is what you mentioned in your question, that uh, you don't have the same intensity or motivation uh, if you don't have a little bit of caffeine in your system. A lot of people experience this. So what do you do about that? Um, well, the programming that you're getting is not like it's not really centered around your ability to produce high levels of motivation and intensity every, every workout. The RPE system takes care of that to a large degree. The fact that the program is focused on higher volumes and higher frequencies at moderate RPEs, things like that, helps to facilitate the fact that, you know, even if your, you know, intensity, even if your mental uh, motivation is not 100%, then that's okay. 
Also, this is a thing that will normalize for you over time. Like, yeah, I realize that, especially if you're used to having that pre-workout, when you cut it out, you're going to feel a big gap. And you may feel that for several weeks. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll depend on, on how quickly you get over that and a bunch of lifestyle factors and stuff like that. But it won't feel that way forever. You'll adjust and this will become a new normal. Uh, maybe you'll maybe you'll sleep more. Maybe uh, you'll be more rested on a day to day, and then won't feel that need, and can kind of establish a, a new baseline. I think that would be the ideal, and then you don't have uh, the problem uh, that this can possibly create with recovery. We're able to shove down more volume and still get you well recovered, which we know is a, a really big determinant of your success. So. It's just kind of some thoughts for you. If you're not having recovery issues, then maybe it's not a problem for right now. Um, but this is something that you're going to keep in mind. And keep in mind that when you do cut out caffeine, it's gonna you're going to feel a gap. And that's okay. That's expected. It's a normal response. You just kind of have to suffer through it and you'll get back to that new normal.